This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing. We're glad about it. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. Thank you for being a part. We're celebrating 100 years, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, and we're giving God praise that God has honored me to be the pastor for 28 years here at the church I grew up in. It's such a great honor. And this church is strong and alive and vibrant and touching lives in incredible ways. And I'm so grateful and so thankful. And thank you because you're a part of that. And we'll be ministering today from Matthew chapter 16 where Jesus made the incredible proclamation that he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. How does that apply to our lives today? It's profound and powerful. It will empower you with a knowledge and an anointing of what God has empowered us to do. Get your Bible. Let's get ready for the Word of God. God bless you. Father, we humble ourselves before you. You're a great God, none like you. We worship you. We trust you. We bless your name. As we come before you today, we intercede for one another. We pray for our brother, our sister. Call their name out before your throne. Not just the hands of the persons we hold do we pray for, but we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who join us through the internet. And we pray, Father, that you would work miracles in their life and that you would be glorified and honored. Father, I pray that you would anoint us to be a mouthpiece for these next few moments. Say through us what you want to say. Make this word a rhema word. Make it alive. Make it touch somebody's life. Save somebody that needs salvation. Reclaim a backslider, Lord. Restore them in Jesus' name. We pray for the unchurched, uncommitted, and we pray that you would allow your perfect will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, you can be seated. Open your Bibles to Matthew 16. I'm about 15 minutes behind my normal time, so I'm going to have to abbreviate this message. I need y'all to start saying amen like right away. Yeah, don't wait for me to get halfway through because I'm already on a short fuse. Matthew chapter 16, and there's this discussion where Jesus asked the disciples. Let me read this to you, beginning at verse 13. Of Matthew 16 when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am so they said some say John the Baptist some Elijah and others Jeremiah's or one of the prophets and he said to them but who do you say that I am Simon Peter answered and said you are the Christ the son of the living God Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I want to talk about the power of the church that Christ builds. Tell your neighbor, there's power in the church that Jesus builds. Look on the other side. Tell them the same thing. This is a familiar passage of scripture. It is often quoted and talked about, preached from. It is a very famous passage of scripture. Jesus has entered into the Caesarea Philippi and he dialogues with his disciples and he asks them this question. What who do people say I am? What are they saying about me in the community? What's the reputation that I have is ultimately the question that he's asking. And they respond, they say, well, some say that you are the reincarnation of John the Baptist or Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? Now, I need to highlight that question because that is the all-important question that everybody in here has to answer. Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you believe that he is? What do you say about him? What are your beliefs about him? Do you embrace that he's God wrapped up in human form? Do you believe that he died on the cross, was buried and rose again just for your sins? Do you embrace that he is the Messiah come from who came from the grave? Who do you say that he is? The question, that's a major question because everybody does not interpret who Jesus really is. 
the Muslims say he's just a good prophet. The Jehovah's Witnesses say one thing about him, that he is a son of God. The Mormons say he's a son of God. The Jews say he's a prophet. But who do you say? Anybody who wants a relationship with Jesus, for him to change their life, you have to embrace Jesus as God wrapped up in the flesh who came and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. That's the key thing that you got to believe that he died on the cross for your sins and he rose again. And in fact, that's how Peter answers. When Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ. Now that's an important thing, the Christ. Because it means that term, that name means you are the anointed one. You are the Messiah. You are he who has come to wash away our sins and give us a relationship with the Father. You're the bridge between us and the Father. You're a way maker. You are a burden bearer. You forgive us of our sins. You deliver us from our issues and our problems. That's what Peter said. You are the Christ. And that's the question I want to ask you today. Who is Jesus to you? Is he the Christ? As a matter of fact, Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then he says this to Jesus. This, then Jesus says this to Peter in verse 18. Here's where I want to spend the bulk of my time today. I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Now, that verse has been debated for hundreds of years as to what it means. If you talk to the Catholics, they believe that when Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, they believe, Catholics, somebody say, That's, this is what the Catholics believe, that the church was built on Peter. And the secession from Peter to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, is a secession of popes. And the Pope has the authority and the power to define new scripture, make new scripture, define new laws, and all of that. That's what the Catholics believe. But I don't believe that's what Jesus was talking about. When he said, you are Peter and on this rock, I don't believe when he said on this rock, he was talking about Peter. I believe when he said on this rock, he was referring to the statement that Peter made that Jesus is the Christ. That's what I believe he was talking about. Because it is on that statement, not on Peter, it is on the statement of what Peter said that the Holy Ghost revealed to him that, that Christ is, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It, it is on that statement that he builds this church and that's what I want to talk about this morning. God is in the process of building a powerful church. Now when it's all said and done, I believe that the church is the institution that God uses to change a culture and a society. Y'all can say what you want, but it's the church that changes people. It is the work of the church. It is the, it is the ministry of the ministering the gospel that changes people. It's not the Q's or the Deltas or the, uh, um, the Alphas or... It's not the Eastern Stars or the Masons. It's the church. You come into church, your life get changed. Anybody here ever came in here broken, downhearted, torn out, and you got a word to help you with the challenges you were facing in life? Anybody here got encouraged and lifted up from a word that you heard? Anybody here came in here lost and left found? Anybody came in here broken and, and, and left here healed? Do I have a witness anywhere in the camp? As a matter of fact, this church, thank God, 100 years, this church has been in existence. 100 years, that's a long time. You don't exist for 100 years if you ain't changing lives. You don't, you don't exist for 100 years if people aren't being helped. People keep coming back to this church week after week and Sunday after Sunday and, and month after month and year after year because this church helps them change their lives. I celebrate and I'm proud of this church. I came by this weekend. I was at both locations, both the ministry center and the worship center. I just 
walking through, just checking and scoping things out. And there's a slew of activities going on in all the facilities. We, at the ministry center, we had the college preparation for kids going to college. And we have training, le uh, a leadership training for leaders. We, we had, uh, I came to the, min uh, to the worship center. We had the Christmas play rehearsal and uh, the dancers getting ready for the day. And we got, we had, uh, 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 the gun buyback program and that's the way it is every weekend not just one weekend every weekend we got a ton of activities going to make a difference in people's lives and yet it troubles me that some people don't want to be connected to the church it is problematic to me that there are people who go to church but they don't want to belong to the church go ahead and preach pastor I'm doing the best that I can I believe it's sin for anybody who claims to be a Christian not to belong, not to, belong to a church. When you have been talking about I'm between churches. Hold up, let me, come here, come here a little closer. There's no question that God knows what church he wants you to be at. So you ought to go ahead and be connected with the church that God wants you to be at. Don't be between churches. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I know you don't. But I believe in the church. I love the church. And I thank God for this church in particular. This church changed my life. This church mapped out my course of my life. I never knew. I didn't realize when I was a little kid and my mother took me to the old raggedy building. I said to her, I've told y'all this before. Act like you ain't heard it before. My mother said, we drove up to the building, and I said, we're not going into this raggedy building, are we? And she said, don't look at the outside of the building. We're not going in there for the, the building's sake. We're going to worship the Almighty God, she told me. I did not realize that inside of that old raggedy church helped my destiny. Inside that broken building, messed up with a pot belly stove and creaky floors and all of that, I didn't know that my destiny was lying up in that church. I went in there as a long, a, a small kid, but you know what I found in that church? Uh, that was all the building was raggedy. I found discipleship in that building. I found mentoring in that building. I found people who loved me and poured into me in that building. I got saved because of what happened in that building. I got the Delivered. I heard words that changed my life. I got loved in that building. And yes, they tore down that building. The county condemned it, said you can't have church in it anymore. They tore it down and they built a brand new building down right there on 3311 Bright Sea Road. My destiny was tied up in that building. What are you talking about, Pastor? Here's what I'm saying today. For many of you today, what is going to determine the outcome of your life is your acceptance of Jesus and you getting plugged into a church. I ain't talking about just attending on Sunday. We got a lot of Sunday-only Christians. Matter of fact, there are probably three or four on your row who only come to church on Sunday. Look up and down and see if you know who they, if you can tell who they are. If they're not saying amen, that's who they are. If they haven't clapped this whole time we've been worshiping, that's who they are. If they didn't worship God doing praise and worship, that's who they are. Go ahead, look up and down to see if you can figure out who they is. Those two things are critical. What do you do with Jesus and will you be plugged into the kingdom of God? Why are you talking about that, Pastor? Because Jesus said this. Here's what he said. I'm almost finished. I got eight minutes to get done. Here's what he said. A very profound thing. I love this passage right here. He said, he said to Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. On this rock, the rock of who Jesus is, he said, I'll build my church. And the church is in the process of building. It's being built. What is it what you're talking about, Pastor? I'm not talking about the facade that we're in. The word built in the Greek right there means to repair. It means to strengthen. The reason I love the church and we need the church is because a good, healthy church will build your life, repair what's broken, and strengthen you in your weak parts of life. Let me thank the 27 people for that rousing affirmation. 
because I'm here to testify and acknowledge that I was weak and broke and I'm giving God the praise because guess what? I'm, I'm not all I'm going to be. I don't, I don't want to come to you and act as though I'm not presenting a facade, a facade as though I have arrived. I'm far from being everything God is going to make me. But here's what I am giving God praise for, that I've come a long way from where I used to be. I was broke, tore up from the floor, messed up, jacked up, terrible person. But I'm not as bad as I used to be. He changed me. He washed me. He cleansed me. He delivered me. He repaired me. He fixed me. He saved me. He made me. I'm not where I'm going to be, but I'm not as jacked up as I used to be. Do I have any witnesses in here who don't mind giving God praise that you're not as jacked up as you used to be? Somebody shake somebody hand and say, I'm not as bad as I used to be. I'm being built. I'm being repaired. I'm being fixed. I don't think the way I used to think. I don't talk the way I used to talk. I don't hang out with the kind of people I used to hang out with. I don't do the things I used to do. He has built me. He's building me. That's why I'm in church every week because he's building me. But then he said this. I'm almost finished. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church. And then he says this, and the gates of hell that's what the King James says. New King James says, Hades, the gates of Hades will not prevail. Somebody going to get this. Somebody going to shout and jump on this point right here. Gates, whenever you read gates in the scripture, it is a symbol for a place of power. It is at the gates where decisions are made. It's at the gates where the power brokers hang out. It's at the gate where the county executives meet and where the senators and the county council people meet at the gate. It's where the smart people hang out. It's where the gifted people are. It's at the gates. And so anytime you read gates, it's talking about a place of power. And here's what Jesus said, at the, from the gate of hell, hell can send their best, their strongest, their smartest. They can send all they want, but they will not prevail against the church of God. Somebody got to shout with me right there at that point. Somebody ought to get excited that no matter what the devil sends in your life, he will not be able to prevail. Hell can't prevail. Demons can't prevail. They won't win. We are winners. We are winners. Y'all ain't got it. If you get that, you'd be jump, jumping and shouting that every time the devil tries to threaten you and make you feel afraid and make you think that you're going to lose and you're going to be defeated and your marriage is not going to survive. You're going to lose your house. You're going to die because of some sickness. Every time he whispers something that in your mind, when you are a part of the church, you know that God is building his church and the gates of hell can't win. You tell the devil, we are winners and not losers. You can't win. Who am I preaching to? Who receives this word of God? Who believes that the gates of hell, everything that the devil aims at you, everything that the devil says to you, he cannot win. We are the winners. The gates of hell shall not prevail. And I decree and speak over you today, you're a child of the Most High God. You belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I prophesy to you today, I don't care what the devil said to you, we cancel out every plot and scheme of the devil and we are the winners, man. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to him to tell you that you're lost and you're defeated. Lift up your hands, all ye gates, 
and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors the king of glory is coming in and he shall make us winners Pastor, how you know we winners? Here's how I know we winners. Because the Christ, God wrapped up in human form, showed us where our power rests. Y'all miss a great spot to shout. Because on a hill called Calvary, y'all excuse me while I use my little old imagination. Jesus was hanging on the cross and the devil said we got him now or we gonna kill him now we have him where we want and while he hung up there on the cross and hung his head and died the devil said we won they went down into hell and started partying They were celebrating that Jesus was dead. They thought they had put an end to his kingdom before it even got started. They celebrated. They were so glad that they had killed Jesus. And they took his body down off the cross and laid it in a tomb. They said, oh, we're partying now. And they were having a good time. It was a party that lasted for about three days. Y'all excuse me for a second. And at the height of the party early one Sunday morning they heard a knock at the door and they say I wonder who's at the door everybody's here pride is here jealousy is here curiosity is here all the demons were there so they sent curiosity to go to knock and find out who was at the door and they went over and said well who is it and a voice said I am the resurrection and the life the light of the world I am and I'm coming in to snatch the keys of death and hell from you and he took the keys from the devil and early on Sunday morning he got up out of the grave with all power in his hands and that's why I know I live because Jesus lives also that's how I know I'm a winner because he got up out of the grave Oh, somebody tell your neighbor, I'm a winner, man. Grab their hand, shake it like you're going to shake it off, and say, we win. He's alive. He's alive. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The devil will not destroy your family. The devil will not mess up your marriage. The devil will not defeat your children. The devil will not destroy your future. The devil cannot win. The gates of hell cannot prevail. I feel a shout. I feel like shout. I feel like giving God the praise. I know I'm past my time, but since I'm past my time, I might as well go ahead and preach another minute or two. And I give God the praise. He's alive and well. He's got all power in his hands. He is alive. Somebody holler out. He's alive. The gates of hell shall not prevail. There's power in the church that Jesus builds. Hallelujah. I want you to ask your neighbor, do you belong to the church? Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Are you walking with God? Are you backslidden? Are you sure of your salvation? Go ahead, ask him. If not, say, come on, let's go down front and get it straight with Jesus right now. Let's get it straight with God right now. Make your way. Don't be ashamed. Make your way here right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Come on right now. Don't be ashamed. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. And he's waiting for, with his arms stretched out wide for you to come. That's right. Come on. Praise him.
proud of you, man. How old are you? How old are you, man? I'm proud of you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. So proud of you. Just what he said we would do. He's on a He's able. He's able. Thank you, Lord. God is able. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise. He's gonna fulfill the name of Jesus. So don't give up on God. Jesus said the Lord is able. He's able. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is able to do, able to do just what He said. Just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise. You declare it. He's Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. He won't. He won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's able to you. He's able. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God is able to do. Just what he said. Just what he said he would do. Hallelujah. It's going to fulfill every Give promise. the Lord a shout for all these souls. Give the Lord a shout for all these souls at the end of the day. This young lady, Corrine, she's eight years old. I'm so proud of her. I said, why did you come down here? She said, because I want to turn my life over to Jesus. I'm proud of you, sweetheart. All right, look at me. Let me talk to you for a moment. You made, this is the best decision you could have ever made in all of your life. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you in the back find out where you are spiritually and minister to you some of you get gonna get saved today some of you are rededicating some of you are not sure you need assurance you're gonna get assurance some of you are already saved you're coming to join this church this here is a great church for you to be a part of let me pray for y'all father in the name of the Lord I thank you for each and every one right now I know you know them by name. I know you know their journey. I thank you for sparing their life and bringing. I pray that you save, forgive,
cleanse, fill them all with your spirit, break every stronghold and chain, ch chain in their life, and let your power reside in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, don't, don't patty cake the Lord. Let's give God a high praise.